Pinta poquito y joder, ¿qué haces? ¿Eh? Píntalo poquito. Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on, guys? So as we get closer and closer to this fight on May 7th between Canelo Alvarez and Bivol, Bivol, he was asked a question about Canelo Alvarez, quote-unquote, legendary sparring sessions, how great he's been looking in sparring, sparring against cruiserweights, heavyweights, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And this is how Bivol responded to it. He said Canelo could spar with aliens, and that wouldn't change anything. I've also done it with cruiserweights and heavyweights as well. The truth is, it doesn't matter in the least because in the end, it's just sparring. Now guys, I will say this. To a certain extent, Bivol is right. It's just sparring. Sparring doesn't always tell you the whole story, but it does give you great insight. For example, you look at this footage of Canelo Alvarez sparring his longtime sparring partner, Ronald Ellis. And even though this is just sparring, it is completely evident that Canelo Alvarez still has a lot of holes in his defense. You can see even when Canelo Alvarez is trying to block the shot, he's still getting hit with jabs. He's still getting hit with lead right hands. Now, of course, when this footage first came out, you have Canelo fans trying to defend Canelo saying, oh, he was just playing with the guy, et cetera, et cetera. But the funny thing is when you play with people in sparring, you usually do things like put your hands down and move your head. Maybe, you know, your sparring partner tried to hit you with an eight punch combination. You slip every single punch, right? You're not hitting him, but you're just showing how he can't hit you. That's normally how it works when sparring partners or when fighters are playing with their sparring partners. You don't purposely make mistakes because you're playing with someone. You're supposed to make it look even easier when you're playing with someone. What we see in this sparring footage is the same thing we see in all of Canelo Alvarez's fights. He's extremely vulnerable to jabs. Once again, even when Canelo has his hands up, he's still getting hit with jabs because Ronald Ellis, he was able to split Canelo Alvarez's guard with the jab, which is something that Bivol specializes in. And this is the reason why I tell you guys, this is the first time Canelo Alvarez is taking on a real challenge, at least in the last four years. But once again, I want to reiterate, I want to emphasize on the point of people saying, oh, well, you know, Canelo was just playing around with him. Once again, look at Canelo Alvarez's positioning. Canelo Alvarez, he has his hands up. At some points, he was even moving his head and still getting hit. When you're playing with someone, like I said, you either put your hands down and you show how elusive you are or you'll put your hands down and you'll just say, hit me with your best shot and you'll let the guy hit you. But Canelo is trying to avoid the punches. He just doesn't have the defense to do it. And in the sport of boxing, your defense is almost more important than your offense. Another good indication that Canelo Alvarez's defense is extremely flawed is the fact that he spars with the nose protection headgear. Now, there's no doubt about it. It's good to use this gear because it protects you from getting a broken nose or having any type of injuries leading into a fight. But the thing is, Floyd Mayweather, he seldomly ever used this guard when he sparred. He used regular sparring gear. Why? Because he knew he had the type of defense to where he wouldn't have to worry about getting his nose broke because he's not gonna be eating jabs and right hands all day in sparring. Now, that makes perfect sense for the sparring partner to be wearing a nose guard 
because he's Canelo Alvarez's sparring partner. And Canelo can't afford to be injuring all of his sparring partners and having to replace them at the last minute. Because depending on whose camp you're in, a lot of fighters, they do get, a lot of sparring partners, they do get sent home with broken noses or they just don't end up coming back because they get injured some kind of other way, right? So yeah, they have to stay protected. They have to stay safe. So like I said, man, sometimes sparring, it tells the whole story. Sometimes it doesn't. I mean, there's been sparring sessions where you could clearly see maybe there was a young undefeated fighter. He's fighting against a champion. And this young prospect is putting hands on a champion. And that is an indication that if they were in a real fight, that young undefeated prospect, he has a good chance of beating the champion, right? Then there are sparring sessions like this one right here where I wouldn't say that Ronald Ellis would beat Canelo Alvarez, but Ronald Ellis is just once again showing how flawed Canelo Alvarez is in terms of defense. That's the only thing he's doing because Ronald Ellis is definitely a sparring partner level type fighter. Now his brother, Rashidi Ellis, who's an undefeated welterweight, that's a different story. This guy is special. In fact, he beat Alexis Rocha, the guy who just knocked out uh, Blair Cobbs. According to reports, Rashidi Ellis was actually signed with Golden Boy and ended up leaving Golden Boy or they dropped him because Golden Boy wasn't getting him any fights or at least not any meaningful fights. The same thing happened to Jamel Charlo. A lot of people don't know this, but Jamel Charlo was originally signed to Golden Boy. You see, Oscar De La Hoya, he promised Jamel when he signed with him, he's going to get him the Canelo Alvarez fight. In fact, Canelo was supposed to be fighting Jamel Charlo instead of James Kirkland. When he ended up fighting James Kirkland, who had, of course, came off knockout losses and was, you know, towards, he was a shell of himself. He was towards the end of his career. When Jamel Charlo, he seen Oscar De La Hoya gave him the James Kirkland fight instead of the Jamel fight. That's when Jamel, he left Golden Boy. So Rashidi Ellis situation is kind of analogous to that. But getting back to my original point, you also have examples like when Erickson Lubin was sparring against Berlanga. We know that that wasn't just sparring. We know the way that played out is exactly the way it would play out in a professional fight. Lubin would knock out Berlanga, hands down. We know this. I'll close out with saying this. Because of how susceptible Canelo is to getting hit with jabs and even straight right hands, he's going to have a lot of problems with Bivol. Even in this exchange you're looking at right here, you see Ronald is actually fighting Canelo on the inside and he's being very effective at it. And even though Bivol is not an inside fighter, he does fight on the inside sometime. He goes in there with a very tight guard He'll block your shots and counter them with hooks. So Canelo Alvarez, he's going to have a serious uphill battle on May 7th. That's all I got for now, guys. I'm on to the next one. Fellas, I've got some great news for you. If you've lost your hair or have a receding hairline, the time has come when you can finally get your hairline back through a process called scalp micropigmentation. So here's how it works. It's a hair tattoo that replicates the look of your hair follicles when you have fully shaved it down. So to get this hookup, make sure you follow and contact my man, Scalp Carolinas on Instagram. All right, now check this out, guys. If you're looking to repair eczema scars, burns and bruises, dark spots and blemishes, then this right here is the perfect product for you guys. It's called L.O. Dekey Face and Body Oil. Athletes and top ranking boxers, they're also using it after training to reduce swelling, inflammation and to ease the pain. So get yours today. Go to LODekey.com, like them on Facebook and follow them on Instagram.